All right, so let's look at curve sketching using derivatives. So I'm going to have several examples. Each example will have its own video because uh, these problems take a little while to work. Uh, so we've got to find out where the function's increasing, decreasing. We've got to find any relative or local maximum minimum points. We've got to find the, can the concavity and we've got to find any inflection points. And then once we find all that, we can sketch the curve. All right, so first thing, we've got to find the critical numbers. All right, so to find the critical numbers, remember, we're gonna find the derivative All right, so you find the derivative, and then you set the derivative equal to zero. So we take 3x squared minus 6x equals zero, and so 3x times x minus 2 equals zero. So we get x equals zero or x equal 2. So these are our critical numbers. All right, so once you find the critical numbers, we plot the critical numbers on a number line. And in this case, since we have two critical numbers, this breaks the line up into three regions. And then what we have to do is we have to choose a point or a X value from each region. Now, it doesn't matter what values of x you choose. You can choose any values of x that you want, just so that you choose an x value from each region. Now, we have to evaluate the derivative. We have to evaluate the derivative at each one of these x values. Now, when we take the negative one and we plug it into the derivative, we can take the negative one and we can plug it into here. Okay, that's fine. But this, this function right here, it's the same thing as this one. It's just this is factored. Okay, but they're the same thing. So yes, you can take the negative one and plug it in and three times negative one is negative three. And negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And negative 3 times, I'm sorry. Yeah, neg uh, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. But you don't have to go that far with it. All we really care about is when we plug this value in for x into the derivative, is it positive or or negative. That's all we care about. So if you look at this, this negative 1, if we plug it into here, you can see 3 times negative 1 is negative. And then if we plug the negative 1 in here, negative 1 minus 2 is negative. So this is a negative times a negative is positive, and that's all we care about. We don't care about what the exact value is. All right. So since we plug the negative 1 into here, and we got a positive as an answer, that means on this interval here, this function is increasing. All right. And then we're going to plug in the 1. So if I plug a 1 in for x, 3 times 1 is positive. 1 minus 2 is negative. So a negative times a positive is negative. And so that means on this interval, it's decreasing. And then we do, I'm sorry, and this should be f prime. And then we do f prime of 3. So 3 times 3 is positive. 3 minus 2 is positive. A positive times a positive is positive. So that means it's increasing there. So that means we have this is decreasing from 0 to 2, and it's increasing from 
negative infinity to zero and two to infinity. Now, on here, I can write these in different colors. And the, the, the stuff that I need to graph my function, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to write it in different colors. What I would recommend is you put like a star beside the things that you need. And this is one of the things we need. Where is it increasing and where is it decreasing? All right, now let's find any local maximum or minimum or relative maximum or minimum values. Okay, so it's easy to find that once we find where the function is increasing and decreasing. So if we look at this, where we found where it's increasing and decreasing, you see here on this interval how it's increasing and then at zero it starts to decrease. So that means at x equals zero we have a local maximum. And then look here, it's decreasing and then at two it starts increasing again. So that means we have a local minimum right here. All right. So we have a local minimum at where? At x equal 2. You see that? All right. Now, your local maximum and minimum values, those are point coordinates on the graph. So you can see here we have an x coordinate. Well, now we need the y coordinate. Well, how do you find that? This is where a lot of students get confused. They don't know where to plug the 2 in. A lot of them will plug it back into the derivative. All right. But remember, you're looking for a point coordinate. So if you have an x coordinate of the point, how do you find the y coordinate? Well, you plug it back into the original function, right? You take the x value plug it in for x into the original function, and then that gives you your y-coordinate. So I have f, let's do that in a different color. So I've got f of 2 is equal to 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared. And for that, we've got, let's see, 8 minus 12 is negative 4. Okay. And so the y-coordinate is negative 4. And then we've got a local maximum at x equals 0. See our local maximum here. So that's at 0. And then we need the y-coordinate. So we take the x value and plug it into here. So that's going to be f of 0 is equal to 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared, and that equals 0. All right. So we're getting there. So we found increasing, decreasing. We found local max and min. Now, it's not always going to have a local max and a local min. Sometimes it might have one or the other. Okay. Sometimes it may have neither one. All right. So now we've got to find concavity. We want to know where is the graph concave up, where is it concave down. All right, so to do that, and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and write my function here. So I'm going to have to scroll up, and we'll need to look at it again. And then the, the other thing that we'll need is the first derivative, okay? Because to find your to find the concavity, the intervals where the function is concave up and concave down, we've got to take the second derivative, all right? So you take the first derivative of f of x, which is this, and then we have to take the second derivative. So that's the derivative of this. That's going to be 6x minus 6. And then we set that equal to 0. And so 6x equals 6, x equals 1. All right. 
So now, once again, we draw a number line and plot this value on the number line. And this time we only have one value, so it's only going to break the, the number line up into two regions. And then what I have to do is I have to choose a number from each region. Makes no difference what values of x you choose, just as long as you choose an x value from each region. And then I have to evaluate the second derivative at each one of these values. So f double prime of 0, well, let's see, if I plug the 0 into here, that's going to be 0 minus 6. That's negative, so that's less than 0. And since I got a negative value when I plug the x equals 0 in, that means on this region it's concave down. And then I plug in the x equal 2. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 minus 6 is positive. And just like before, that's all we care about. Is it positive or negative? We don't care about the exact value. So since I got a positive value, that means this is concave up. All right. So now we know that this is concave downward from negative infinity to 1 and concave upward from 1 to infinity. All right, so we found increasing, decreasing, local max min, the concavity. Now we need to find our inflection points. Inflection, well, we're only going to have one here, but inflection point, inflection point, sometimes you may have more than one. All right, so the inflection point, that is where the graph changes concavity. That's the inflection point. So the inflection point, that's where it changes from concave down to concave up or concave up to concave down. All right. So we can see here that it changes concavity at x equal 1. See, it changes from concave down to concave up. So our inflection point is 1. All right. Then inflection point. It's a point. So we need the xy coordinate. So we've got the x coordinate, and just like before, how do we find the y coordinate? You plug it back into the original function to get your y value. So that's f of 1 is equal to 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 squared, and that is negative 2. All right. So now we found everything. Okay. We found everything. So now we use the stuff that I have written in red, or for you, you know, you put a star by it. Now we're going to use that to graph. So I'm going to erase this stuff and just have all the red stuff on there so we can see everything at one time and sketch the graph, and I'll pause the video while I do it. All right, so now let's go ahead and graph this thing. So we'll draw us an xy coordinate system. All right, so... Let's see, let's look at the points we have. We have 2, negative 4, 0, 0, and 1, negative 2. So let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so the first thing we want to do, let's plot all our points. So we've got the point 2, negative 4, about right in there. Uh, 1, negative 2, 0, 0. All right, so now let's graph it. All right, so first thing I'm going to look at is let's look at the increasing and decreasing. 
All right, so here I've got one, two, three, four. All right, so, and then there's negative one, negative two, so on. All right, so from zero to two, it's decreasing. So that means from here, from x equals zero to x equal two, this thing's decreasing. From negative infinity to negative infinity to zero, it's increasing. So from negative infinity out here, all the way up to x equals zero, this thing's increasing. You see that? It's increasing. So let's see, that's a maximum at zero. So we've got, let's see, let's draw from here. It's increasing, increasing, increasing. All right. Now you see how I drew this in? Did I draw it in right? Or should it have been drawn in like this or the way that I have it drawn right now? Well, We've got to go to this. Well, from negative infinity to one, so negative infinity up to one, it's concave down. You see that? Concave down. So I know I'm not going to draw it like this. All right. So it's coming in here like this. That's a maximum. And then I know once I hit x equals zero, it's going to start decreasing. Right. And then at one, Notice from one to infinity, this from from x equal one this way, it's it goes to concave up. So it's staying like this. I have what? A minimum at two negative four. And then when I get to x equal two, it starts increasing again. So it turns back up. And it goes like this. Now whether this thing crosses the graph at four or not, that's, you know, you might want to maybe, uh, well, or what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and erase the four and then just draw it going through like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could find this value. You would just set this equal to zero and solve for X. And, and actually, if you do that, it actually crosses here at three. So, well, uh, Let's just, let's erase that and draw it going through three. So it looks something like that. All right, so check out the other videos. I'll, I'll have more of these, and as the example numbers get higher, like example one, two, three, four, five, as the example numbers get higher, the problems will be a little tougher. All right, so hopefully this helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.